My name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today is a Sunday sewing catch up and we're on episode 60. Um, as usual, I've got lots of different things to share with you, including a couple of things that I've been sewing. I've got some fabric. I have got a pattern that I've just bought and a couple of other things. So before we get started with that, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. I have a feeling I've worn this in a video quite recently, um, but I've been really enjoying wearing my Tilly in the Buttons Bobby Pinafore dresses. Um, and then I've just got a Tilly in the Buttons Billy jumper on underneath. And this lovely floral jersey was from uh, Felicity Fabrics. Corduroy, I can't remember where I got this corduroy from, um, but it's lined with this really gorgeous, um, like Alice in Wonderland cotton. I don't know if you can see that. That's what I'm wearing. Um, where possible, I will put pictures in of the things that I'm talking about and I will link all of the patterns down below. I will stand up so you can see this dress, but it's quite tricky to get it on camera. Um, the Billy jumper, I absolutely love. It's got these really lovely voluminous sleeves and they're gathered into a cuff. And um, there's a neckband, but you can't see it because this fabric's so busy. And then it's sort of gathered into the shoulder as well. And it goes perfectly with a pinafore dress. And then the bobby pinafore dress, you can sew it as a skirt. So you can see it's got the waistband there and the belt loops. I love the pockets and I like that it's fitted at the waistband. And then this stops above my knee. So you can see I've just got it on with tights today. Um, and it just sits just above. Buttons all the way down. And then it's got straps that cross over at the back. Really comfortable and great for this sort of in-between weather that we seem to be having. We seem to be having quite a mild November at the moment, so it's not too cold. So I've got tights on, um, but not thick woolly tights. And then the jumper just provides a little bit of um, sort of layering on top. So this week has been a really busy week for work. I've had parents evening for two evenings. That's meant late evenings at work. And then I also had um, a really lovely like fireworks event with school as well. Um, so every year there's a fireworks display and then the um, adults at school volunteer to go and make sure that everybody's safe. We get to watch the fireworks display, but it means it's another really late night. So for that reason, I haven't been sewing a huge amount. Um, in the last video, I talked about some um, hand sewing that I needed to do. And that was for my um, I Am Hather, which is an I Am Patterns um, pattern and this is like a gilet type thing in that gorgeous iridescent quilted fabric so I just had to do some hand stitching along the hem um, where I needed to just close up where I'd pulled the coat through so I'm really pleased that I've managed to finish that and that means that this can now get worn and it's a really lovely extra layer and actually I think it does go uh, with what I'm wearing today so just fasten it up I think it would go over the top of something like this and then because I've got navy tights on, I think that floral jumper goes with this and it sort of matches that floral fabric that you've got on the inside. Um, it's a really lovely, snuggly, extra sort of layer. And I think it's perfect for this sort of in-between weather. And actually, I think it would provide a really lovely, lovely layering piece if I had like a hoodie underneath or a zip-up jacket, or I could just put it on underneath like a raincoat or something. So I'm really pleased that I've managed to get that finished. And that was quite an enjoyable, um, how long did it take me? Probably about an hour because I was being really careful to make sure that you couldn't really see the stitching um, and you can't really see the stitching. It's quite tricky because it's quite busy anyway. Um, but yeah, I was being really careful. So I'm really pleased with that one. And then I've talked for ages. Oh, every time I put something on, my hair goes a mess. Um, and then I've talked for absolutely ages about sewing up some Yanta overalls in some dinosaur, um, sort of a lightweight needle cord. And I'm really pleased that I've managed to get them sewn up. I can't wait to wear them to school. I think the children in my class are going to love them. Um, they really love dinosaurs at the moment and they've been teaching me all the different names of the dinosaurs. So here they are. I will put pictures in of me wearing them so you can see what they look like. Um, but I've done the usual with the Yantas where I fastened them with dungaree clips. It's got the bib pocket on the top and then you've got the pockets at the front. And then I've also put pockets on the back. You can't really see the pockets, but yeah, there's pockets. It's a really busy fabric. I extended the length of them so that I could turn them up because I really like the idea of being able to wear them. Um, like that so I did extend the length of them just so that I could turn them up and um, this fabric is so fun I absolutely love it 
I mean, I think it's just the perfect fabric for an early years teacher. Um, and I know that Yanta overalls are perfect for work. They're really, really comfortable to wear. So I'm really excited about wearing those to school. I'll probably get those um, worn this week, I think. Um, probably with just a grey uh, mock neck jumper underneath. I think that would go really nicely. Or I've got my green South Bank sweater, which I think would go with that green of the dinosaurs. So I'm really excited about wearing those. And then the final thing that I've got sewn up is something that I talked about in the Sew Up Cycle 22 vlog that I filmed and published not too long ago. Sadly, I didn't get this um, finished or even sewn up or started in time for the challenge. Um, but I did really enjoy sort of thinking about what I would do with this fabric. So in my video, I shared three different things. I had um, a skirt that I'd bought from a charity shop in a jersey fabric. And to be honest, that was a bit of a disaster. I've not really touched that jumper since um, because it was such a disaster. I also had a skirt, which was like a viscose linen fabric, which was floral. I haven't got round to turning that into a top yet because I turned it into a really gathered skirt and I just don't wear it. And then I had a um, sort of a duvet cover that I got from a charity shop and I wanted to turn it into, I couldn't decide whether to turn it into a dress or a skirt and I've actually gone for a skirt. And here it is. It does need finishing. I need to add buttons onto it, but I've got the buttons ready to go. And that will be some lovely hand sewing later when I watch a little bit of TV. When I watch the, I'll probably do it when I watch the Strictly results for this evening. Um, but this duvet cover was absolutely gorgeous. So it's like pink crisscross and then it had all these gorgeous leaves all over it. So the pattern that I went for in the end is a pattern that I had in my stash and I've had it in my stash for absolutely ages, but I just haven't sewn it. I'd completely forgotten that I had this skirt pattern in my stash until somebody reminded me of it. Um, and then I went and got it copy shop printed. I tend to use Fabuloso for my copy shop printing because I just like their uh, tissue paper and they also print pattern booklets as well. Um, so I've turned it into the So Liberated um, estuary skirt and here it is. So I've gone for, I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but I've gone for the patch pockets, which are quite deep. Um, and you can also sew inseam pockets. I just went for patch pockets. It's a skirt pattern that's got elastic in the back. And then you've got the um, flat fronted waistband at the front. And then there's the option to sew a fake um, sort of placket going down the front. Or you can sew buttons. I've gone for the fake placket down the front. But I am going to put but buttons over the top of it. I just need to decide what buttons. I think I've decided. I've got some really nice like sage green buttons. Which I think would go really nicely down this skirt. Um, I really love the look of this skirt. And I really love how this has turned out in this fabric. This fabric is quite a lightweight fabric. And it looks really lovely and floaty as well. I think the patch pockets look really nice on it. And then you've got the elastic in the back. So that creates a bit of gathering at the back as well. The skirt length stops just below my knee, which is a really nice length on me. And then you can just see the pockets there, which I think are really lovely. So I was too late to enter this into the Sew Up Cycle Challenge, but I'm really pleased that I have got round to sewing this up. And I've got a couple of green tops that I know will go really nicely with this skirt as well. I will put some pictures in of me wearing this. Um, I'd completely forgotten about that pattern, but actually it was a really enjoyable sew. Came together fairly quickly. Um, and I really love the style of the skirt as well. So I'll link that pattern down below if you haven't checked it out. So that's all the sewing that I've been getting up to this week. But I have got the True Bias Riley Dungarees cut out and ready to go. So I spent a little bit of time in the evenings when I was too tired for sewing, just cutting some projects out. So I've cut out the Riley dungarees in that denim that I shared last weekend. And then I've also cut out a couple of Maya Sotis dresses in Christmas fabric, which I'll share at the end of the video. But yeah, busy week at school, which meant that I didn't have a huge amount of sewing time. But I'm really pleased that I've managed to get those dinosaur Yanta overalls sewn up. Can't wait to wear them. So the next thing I wanted to share with you is a pattern. So it's a new pattern released by Helen's Closet and it's a pattern called the Brooks Jeans. Now I have got a couple of jeans patterns already in my stash. I've sewn up the I Am Sunshine Jeans. I really love the Anna Allen Persephone pants and you can sew those in denim which gives a really lovely jeans sort of look. Um, and I've got a couple of jeans patterns that I haven't got around to sewing up yet. Um, the reason I went for this pattern is because I absolutely love Helen's Closet patterns. The instructions are incredible. 
um, and I really loved the look and the style of the jeans as well. They're a high-waisted classic jeans pattern. Um, you can sew them as a slightly cropped above the ankle length or you can sew them as shorts. Um, they are designed for non-stretch fabrics um, and the aim is sort of a comfortable fit with a slightly tapered shape in the legs. They recommend medium to heavyweight woven fabrics um, like a denim, um, you can sew them in corduroy and actually I've seen an absolutely gorgeous sort of olive green pair that are beautiful and that is what sold me on this pattern actually. It comes in sizes 0 to 34 and it was drafted for somebody of a height of 5 foot 6. So I have bought the pattern, I've sent it off to get copy shop printed but I'll put some images in now of what the pattern looks like. And I've got a couple of pieces of corduroy in my stash that I think would work really nicely for this jeans pattern. Um, I really love Helen's closet patterns. I love the fit, I love the style, and the instructions are just brilliant. So although this is, um, I think they recommend an intermediate sewist to sew up this pattern, the instructions are incredible and really hold your hand every step of the way. So if you were looking for a jeans pattern and you haven't sewn jeans up before, you're feeling a bit nervous, I would definitely recommend this pattern um, just for the instructions. The instructions are absolutely brilliant. So I'm really excited about giving this pattern a try. And then there's a challenge going on at the moment called A Gift to November. And my video was published last Wednesday. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but we're being encouraged to sew up some gifts throughout the month of November to kind of get a bit ahead if you celebrate Christmas. So I shared seven free gift patterns um, in that video. So do go and check it out if you're looking for gift ideas. But if you search the hashtag a gift to November on YouTube, you'll find all the different vloggers that have shared gift ideas. There's loads of ideas. It's really inspiring. But the reason I'm mentioning that is because the lovely Jane, who is the dressmaker's closet, I'll link all of her socials down below, has just released some free patterns for everybody with the idea of some gifts. So I'll put some images in now of what those gifts look like. But there's a pin cushion, sleep mask, a heart swag, bunting, hair ties, and this really cute like raggy brooch as well. Um, so I'll link um, her website so you can go and check out those patterns if you'd like to. Um, I thought that was really kind. And some of those look like fantastic gift ideas as well. So on to one of my favourite things, and you can tell by the big smile that's on my face, but I have got some fabric to share with you. So I'm going to start with fabric from the New Craft House. They've just released or shared some gorgeous dead stock jersey fabrics, and I couldn't resist getting a couple of pieces. I don't really know what I'm going to do with them yet, but the first one is this absolutely gorgeous, I think they said they were raccoons. They've got all these gorgeous, um, yeah, I think they are raccoons all over it. And it's like a dusky pink. This was described as an interlock jersey. Um, so this is what it looks like on the other side. So it's got a little bit of texture, but it's not fluffy like the next fabric that I'm going to share with you. And that's because it's an interlock jersey. So I got a metre and a half of this. So I think I'm going to turn this into the Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper, which is exactly what I'm wearing now, because I think this would go really nicely with some of the jeans and trousers and skirts, but also underneath dungarees. I just love that really cute print all over it and that really lovely dusky pink colour. And then the next fabric was described as um, sweatshirting, so fleece-backed sweatshirting fabric and again this has got really cute animals all over it it's got pelicans all over it um, and I got a meter of this fabric and this is really lovely and fluffy on the other side I don't know if you can see that texture but it's super fluffy on the other side and I'm really looking forward to snuggling in this and I think this needs to be either a jumper or a cardigan so I can just wrap myself in it because it feels really lovely and soft um, and it's got a really cute design all over it. They had quite a few of these left, so I'll link them down below if they've still got the two that I've shared with you um, left. And then the next set of fabrics I've got, I bought from Rainbow Fabrics. Now, I haven't bought from them for a really, really long time. I've been trying to resist any of their fabric drops, but they shared a selection of jersey fabrics, and there was a couple that I just could not resist. So I've got written down here what the type of fabrics were that I bought and how much I bought, so I always forget what they're called. Um, so let's start with the first one, which is described as an autumnal crinkled viscose jersey crepe. So it's on like a black background and I really loved all the colours, like they're really autumnal colours 
in this fabric. It's got texture because of that crepe um, and it's quite a bouncy fabric. I don't know if you can see, but it's really, really bouncy. Um, it feels quite, quite lightweight actually, but it is, it's got a lot of drape and it is a really, really, like you can see that it's a really bouncy fabric. I've got two meters of this um, gorgeous autumnal fabric, but I don't really know what I'm gonna turn it into yet. It's got a really lovely amount of stretch, but also a really nice amount of give. Um, so if anyone's got any ideas for what to turn this into, please let me know. I haven't got a clue at the moment, um, but I just couldn't resist those beautiful colors on that black background. That black background really makes those colors pop. I think it's really gorgeous. The next fabric I couldn't resist because it's got a really cute design all over it. And this is described as black fox viscose jersey. Um, and this, I got two meters of this as well. Um, and I was thinking of turning this into maybe a Tilly and the Buttons Freya dress, because I know that you can sew that with jersey. But how cute are those foxes? And then those gorgeous um, sort of leaves all over it as well, and the plants. It gives off a sort of Christmassy vibe with the white design of the plants all around the foxes. I just thought the foxes were really cute. Some of them are asleep. Some of them are just sat up. Some of them look like they're going for a little walk. Um, and this was a viscose jersey. So if I open it up, what's the drape like? Let's see. So it's got a little bit of drape. And then in terms of the stretch, I'll have to be really careful. Can you see when I stretch it, you can see the white on the other side coming through. So I just have to think really carefully. Maybe the Freya dress isn't the right pattern to go for because that would be sort of stretched across me. Um, I need to have a little think about what I'm going to turn that into. Um, I might just turn it into a jumper for myself. And I'm pretty sure if Lola sees this, she'll probably want some of this fabric too. So I've got enough to make us some matching jumpers if she decides she wants a jumper too. But that print is just so cute. So I'm looking forward to turning that into something. Um, and then the final fabric is another viscose jersey. I only got a metre of this because I'm going to turn it into a jumper. But I fell in love with this thinking about uh, my early years teacher hat because I just thought the children would absolutely love this. And if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I love anything with animal prints all over it. Um, our classes at school are named after different animals and mine is tiger class and this has got tigers on it so I, I love anything with animals but I love anything with tigers in particular. I just thought it was a really lovely design with all the different wild animals all over it um, and it's on a grey background. It's a viscose jersey, it's quite a lightweight viscose jersey and it has got a little bit of drape but I think this is going to become a jumper of some sort that I can wear under my Yanta overalls um, and wear to school because I think the children are just going to love seeing all the different animals all over it. It's a really fun print. So those are all the fabrics that I've been buying. The next thing I wanted to share with you is a sewing challenge that I've only just discovered. It does finish in a couple of weeks. Um, there is a hashtag for it and the hashtag is sew together for winter. And the idea behind it is that we are being encouraged to sew a coat. So sewing some kind of outerwear it can be a coat, or a jacket or any type of outerwear. We can use any pattern, you can use any fabric and it's running from the 18th of October so it's been running for quite a while now and then the final date is the 30th of November. So we're being encouraged to make a coat and then post our entry using the hashtag sew together for winter and then tagging the organisers. So there's three people that you need to make sure that you tag. There is sewing underscore in underscore Spain there's so Sarah Smith and then there's crafting underscore Slovak. Um, I'll link all of the information down below if you're interested in taking part. Um, but I think I'm going to enter my I am Heather jacket into that. There's a couple of jackets that I've already sewn up and shared um, within the time frame. So I might go back and tag them because I didn't realise that this challenge was running and I've already sewn up a couple of jackets. So I sewed up the pink corduroy um oh what's the pattern friday pattern company ilford jacket and then i've also sewn up the tilling the buttons eden and then my i am heather i think i would definitely be able to include in that as well so i just thought i'd let you know about that just in case you haven't seen it there are a couple of weeks left because the challenge finishes on the 30th of november 
So I always like to finish with some sewing plans and I've always got ongoing sewing plans. So I've been talking in the last couple of weeks about the True Bias Riley dungarees so that they are all cut out and I think I'm just going to be plodding on with those over the next couple of weeks because there's quite a lot of steps to making the dungarees and I'm just making them in a plain denim at the moment. Then I have got two Dear and Doe My Sotis dresses cut out and I'll just show you the fabric but it's fabric I shared not too long ago with a Christmas theme in mind. So I want to get these sewn up so that I can wear them to work um, in December because I've got lots of Christmassy outfits that I like to wear in the build up to Christmas. So the first one is this gorgeous, it's a green background and it's got all these Christmassy houses all over it with the cars and the Christmas trees and things. And then the other fabric is this really fun animal print. So again, I just love anything with animals and they've all got Christmas hats and Christmas glasses and it's just really, really cute. So I've got those two cut out and then I'm not going to sew these up, but I definitely want to get these cut out this week. So I've got this gorgeous camel coloured wool that was sent to me in a fabric swap. And I'm turning this into the Kokowawa Crafts um, nutmeg jacket. So I'm really excited about getting that cut out. I've not cut it out yet, um, but that will take me a while to get cut out because um, there's quite a lot of pattern pieces in that fabric. It, there's a huge amount of fabric there. So I'm looking forward to getting that cut out. And then the other thing that I want to get cut out, I don't know if I get around to sewing this up this week, but... I talked about my make nine plans last weekend and thank you so much to everybody for suggestions on all the different fabrics that I shared. But with the watermelon um, check fabric that was green and pink, I'm gonna sew up the new dungaree pattern by Nina Lee, which is the Carmel dungarees. So I wanna get that cut out. And then the fabric that came in the Sew Hilly Jane box, I think I've got that here. It's a similar design and I'm gonna turn it into the Carmel as well. So I might get them both cut out at the same time. How gorgeous is that fabric? It's like a rainbow tartany type fabric. So I'm looking forward to turning that into the Carmel dungarees as well. I think that would go really nicely with a, a mock turtleneck top on underneath. Um, and I think it'd be a really nice autumnal, sort of autumn winter um, sort of outfit to wear. So that was everything that I wanted to share with you this week. I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to and seeing some of the things that I have been getting around to sewing. Um, and I've got quite a few projects, as always, planned for the next couple of weeks. So I will keep you updated. Um, I'll be back very soon with another video. I've got my Sew Hilly Jane unboxing coming out on Wednesday. And then next weekend, I'll be back with another Sunday sewing catch up. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Oh, before I go, actually, I wanted to show you this lovely uh, picture that I've got behind me. So this was from Lola, who absolutely loves something called diamond painting. So where you get all these tiny little... Um, they call them diamonds, but they're not really diamonds, but these tiny little pieces that you stick on using a little bit of wax. And it's a little bit like paint by numbers, but you use the little diamonds. Um, and then you create this picture and she's absolutely loved making them. She's made quite a few quite recently. And this was Lovebirds that she made for me and said that I could put it in my sewing space. So I've just got it behind me now because um, we managed to get a frame for it. It's so beautiful and the patience that she had to put that together taken her hours and hours well probably months actually when we add up how much time it's taken her to make it so thank you so much for watching take care and i'll be back soon with another video bye